How can a person be the strongest human being who ever lived? How can we be invincible? How can we resist anything that happens to us in life? Especially in those times. And the reason I'm asking that question is because it seems that it's possible. It's humanly possible. Because there was a man in this week's parasha, parasha Shemini, who apparently was this kind of person. Aharon Kohen finally reached the dream of his life. He got it. He became the Kohen Gadol after 80 plus years. He always wanted to be that person bringing Am Israel close to Boreola. And he did it. The day finally arrived and everything worked out. The Korbanot, the Shekhinah, Hashem forgave him for the Egel. It was all perfect. The emotion was at top. And yet, in the midst of all these beautiful moments, the worst happened. Half of his children died before his eyes. Nadav Avihu, his two sons, Behakrivam Esh Zara, brought a sacrifice that Hashem did not want, and they died on the spot. Aharon could have said, Wait, Bore Olam, now, on the day that I get everything, on the happiest day of my life, that's what you do to me. What would have been your reaction? What could you have said? What would you have felt? And yet, Vayidom Aharon. Vayidom comes from the word Domem. Domem is like a stone. He was not affected. He was not touched. He was able to just take it in and move on. As if nothing happened. How can we be so strong? How can we be this kind of person? And I think that the answer is not in the first half of the parasha. I think the answer is in the second half of the parasha, a second half that seems completely disconnected from the beginning of the parasha. When we are dealing with the events and the story of the coronation of Aharon, the death of Nadav and Avihu, our emotions are being taken and then we jump straight to very technical rules of kashrut. The second half of the parasha tells us about what kind of animals and fish and birds and reptiles we can or cannot eat. And one may ask himself, what is happening? Why do we have to read such opposite readings in the same parasha? What do they have to do with each other? And I think that the answer is right there. You see, the halachot of kashrut are the laws that we deal with every single day. You know why? Because it's about food. And food is all the time. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, between, at between, going out, going in, are always questions. They are always relevant to the laws of kashrut. This hashgaha, that hashgaha. Our diet, food is just a very, very important part of our life. And the Torah is asking us, Ben Adam, my dear Jew, I want you to remember something. To always be aware that there are things that you can eat and others that you may not. That is the conclusion of the parasha, the last pasuk. To make a distinction, to make a separation, to understand that there is what we do and what we don't do. There is things that we can and things that we cannot. Things that we understand and things we don't understand. And yet, at Sada Shavid, the common denominator is that we need to accept just that. Because that is what makes us Jews. That is what makes us kadosh, holy, special. But you know, boundaries in life are not just about having a structure, are not just having a discipline. It's way more than that. Because boundaries are letting us understand 
the things that we cannot control are still in safe hands. Bore Olam is still in charge. I heard once a story, there was a bus full of young men who was waiting for the driver to take them back home. They had a trip by the mountains and they were all waiting in the bus. Waiting and waiting and waiting to go home. And finally, the bus starts moving. But it starts moving without the driver coming in. And they all started to panic. What do we do? They open the book of Tehillim and it starts moving slowly, slowly down the hill. And they scream to Bore Olam and they're crying and they're screaming and they're panicking. What do we do? What's happening? We're all going to die. And at that point, one young boy says, guys, what's going on? Why are you afraid? This bus has a special cabin, mini cabin, where the driver goes in and he drives the bus without us seeing him. But I did see him coming in. He took the wheel and he started to drive. The moment he said that, everyone was quiet. Everyone was relieved. Nothing had changed by the bus. The bus just continued driving. But what had changed was their perspective. That at the end of the day, they were in good hands. And that's exactly what is happening in the world. We may not forget that Borea Olam is still driving. He has the wheels. No matter what happens, we will be okay. And that happens only when we understand that there is the me zone and him zone. You see, the aftertaste of Pesach is freedom. And when we talk about liberty and freedom and rights, we may get confused between a word in Hebrew that says Hofshiyut and Herut. We did not say we are Hofshi. Hofshi means no boundaries, everything allowed, no limits. Herut. Real freedom, according to Torah, is not the one that I can do anything I want, that I can have everything I want, that I understand everything I'm being told to do. That's not Herut. That's Hofshiut. That's not what we have on Pesach. Herut is the ability to make room for Bore Olam, for God, and to say, God, this is in your hands because I don't understand. Because I am limited, because I'm just a human being, and you know better, and you do better. And that was the secret for Aharon Cohen. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it takes a lot of time, a lot of kohot, but it works. And this is how we live. Vayi bayom hashemini. You know, in Hebrew, shemini number eight is the supernatural number. Seven is nature. Eight is infinite. Because this is how we live a life of infinity, of Nitzhayut. We connect ourselves to past generations, future generations of what we call a bond of eternity. In this way, we let our life to be above nature, to be a life that allows real Nisim, real miracles happen to us, to our families, to our community, to all Am Yisrael. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu have mercy on us to see our courage, to see our faith, to see our efforts, to bring us Nisim Veniflaot, Amen Veniratzon. Shabbat Shalom Borach.